So this morning we're going to be talking about the Lorentz factor. The Lorentz factor is an important component of special relativity. It was actually derived before Einstein wrote special relativity or came up with the concept of special relativity. However, the Lorentz factor is really important in understanding the differences between non-inertial frames of reference. Okay, so a few things that we need to consider with the Lorentz factor. Firstly, like I was saying, it is central to Einstein's special relativity. Secondly, it factors, or its role is, as a factor of the difference between two non-inertial frames of reference. Now you should understand what inertial two inertial frames of reference are. That's when two frames of reference are moving in the same direction and at the same velocity. Obviously, when we talk about non-inertial frames of reference, what we're referring to here is frames of reference that are either moving in opposing directions or in various directions to one another, um, or they're moving at different speeds. Now, in that um, arrangement, when we're talking about non-inertial frames of reference, Einstein, oh sorry, the classical Classical laws of physics don't apply, and Einstein's special relativity comes into play. Now, what we must remember with the Lorentz factor, the Lorentz factor is normally represented like that. Sometimes it's represented like something like that. And it's given by 1 on the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, where c squared is obviously the speed of light, and... V is given as the velocity of one of the moving frames of reference compared to the other one. Okay, so how do we derive this component of the Lorentz factor? Well, let me see if I can move down a page. Well, let's consider that we have let's consider that we have an atomic clock set up. So atomic clock set up here. Okay, and we obviously have a person within the frame of reference moving here. If we're going to show the photon. Okay, so this is our photon. And the photon is whizzing back and forth between two mirrors, giving us a measurement of time. I've described this in previous lessons, but it's something for us to consider. Now, obviously, this distance of the photon can be expressed by the speed of light by the time that it takes that photon to travel to that area. However, if we consider a person who is observing this outside the moving frame of reference, and that moving frame of reference may be moving with a velocity of v, Okay, so this is our this is our uh, stationary observer. Observer. Okay, what they will see is they will see this photon and here's the person within the frame of reference. But they will see the photon move like so. And the distance that this photon would travel would be given by the speed of light times the dilated time. So we 
we call the dilated time this aspect here that would be dilated time and this aspect here is called proper time proper time because obviously the person within the station uh, sorry the moving frame of reference is observing uh, the is observing the photon moving up and down no no uh, non-inertial frame of reference from their standpoint within that moving frame therefore it's considered proper time now what we can do is we can use Pythagoras to be able to distinguish or to be able to find the Lorentz factor so what we have here is our vectors and this vector here horizontal vector would be given by vt prime okay or v dilated time so what we can do here is we can resolve it using pythagoras saying like so okay so moving forward and then resolving this so what we had was squared okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to square all the components just expanding the expression and then we're going to put it in terms of proper time let's divide everything by well we can factor out proper time here and we can have see that the Lorentz factor is starting to reveal itself squaring both sides and then what we are after to do here is to put it in terms of dilated time and that would be proper time multiplied by 1 on the square root of 1 minus v squared c squared and obviously this component here is our Lorentz factor and we say that our Lorentz factor is given by 1 1 minus v squared on c squared and this is used in every calculation where you want to look at time dilation length contraction and mass energy uh, differences between non-inertial frames of reference using special relativity okay thank you